Greetings, everyone. This is Rock and Roll Spot coming at you with the weekly comic book roundup. We've already covered this week's X Men books as well as uh, this week's Star Wars books and Aliens books. Oh, book. Um, now, on to this week's Avengers books, Spider Man books, and Champions. Kicking things off with Iron Man number 10. Where we left off, while chasing Korvac to. while trying to prevent Korvac from reaching uh, Galactus' world ship, Ta 2. Iron Man was separated from his ragtag party of heroes and found himself on a strange planet. Inhabited, but still strange. So it was, apparently the community is called Megado. There are, pl there are plenty of people there who have just been, you know, very suddenly plucked away. Uh, the colony is seemingly administrated by a woman named Yar. Um, there's a an armored Canadian superhero, Avro X, who's also there. He's actually part of the. Uh, he kind of leads the the militia that. You know, guards the little sell settlement. But there's kind of, it's explained there is kind of, the Yar's not in charge. She's kind of the, the mouthpiece for the person who is in charge. Which, which is something that uh, Iron Man will worry about another, another time. Now he's realizing there is a slight problem. As the armor is, is currently, he can't take his helmet off out of fear of, you know, because of a broken neck. A morphine uh, drip was, was working with the armor. It was supposed to be a you know temporary thing, kind of you know kind of a okay. Once everything's over and the next and Tony's neck is fixed, morphine drip is gone. No no worries. Yeah, um, it's been six days though. He Tony is developing a morphine addiction. And he does discover a, the remains of uh, giant robots and manages to uh, basically steal power from them, which, as he puts it, it's not morphine, but it's still something pretty good. But uh, Iron Man is taken to see the, uh, you know, basically the man behind the, count the curtain. It's still man. Who's actually trying to be, you know, he's, and he's, he's, there's not a grift. It's just, he's, you know, he found himself there one day, and so he's trying to make the best of it. We also learn that Yar is Cree. Um, afterwards, Tony joins in on a baseball game, uh, pop-up baseball game, and, you know, first at bat, hits a double. Um... And he starts thinking maybe he actually wouldn't mind staying at the colony. You know, it's it's, it's nice. But he it's, he knows he needs to take down Korvac. But you know, maybe staying at the colony isn't isn't a terrible thing. Or going to return to the colony isn't a terrible thing. But he's able to, able to uh, converse with uh, Hellcast's astral form as she explains that she's had her you know she basically got. Uh, her mad mental skills re up by Moon Dragon. But it's, it, was, it had to explain that there is something that attacked, that there is something native to the planet that does often trouble the, uh, the settlement. And it arrives. It turns out to be none other than Ultimo. Ultimo, uh, for those unaware, is a long time Iron Man foe. Giant robot constantly gets. Uh, you know, redesigned. Apparently, it's thought this is the planet the Ultimos came from initially. So, the Yar is killed, and it turns out also that the Ultimos are eating the some of the uh, captured uh, 
people, or some of the people at, uh, at the colony, including Yar. But uh, Tony's able to use his unibeam to blow a hole through it, takes down the Ultimo, and opts to stay there, basically taking Yar's place at the behest of Stiltman. And that is where the issue ends. Very interesting. Um, it'll be not something I expected, like at all. Definitely see where uh, well where all this goes. It was nice to you know get a degree of an or a. Uh, uh, Little bit, a little nugget of, of uh, Ultimo Origin added. Uh, it's kind of thought to be that the, that the planet they're on is the home planet the, where the Ultimo's originated from, but that's anyone's guess. Um, anyways, moving on to our next book, we've got Spider Woman number 13. Where we left off. Um. Jess was dumped. And, um... So the issue begins with, uh... Jess taking on a, uh... Armored thief named Fireball in her apartment. Uh... As the fight continues... Jerry, her son... Zaps... Uh... Fireball with his own power, which appear to be manifesting. But Jess has got a uh, so Jess has got someone to come in to keep an eye on Jerry. So she, but she chases uh, Fireball down. They fight on the subway. Then, a guy named Bruiser, who dresses kind of like a luchador, uh, turned the, the uh, assault, the attack on Jess was to steal the uh, High Evolutionary's files. So, yeah. But Fireball transfers the files to, gives the files to Bruiser. They're on a, they're on a 3.5 inch floppy disk. Then... But yeah, so Bruiser's Jess chases Bruiser all the way to Hoboken. Uh, he is the airport in Newark, where Lady Bullseye intercepts him and uh, takes the, the files herself, leading to a fight between Lady Bullseye and uh, Spider Woman. Fun fact: pretty sure this is the first comic I've ever read that featured Lady Bullseye. I, I, I was aware of the character just. Never, you know, never popped up anything I read previously, or at least if she, and if she did, it was usually just kind of a background thing. But uh, yeah, their battle go gets airborne. Um, she's got she's wearing a jetpack. Um, and I, but. Jess is able to get the uh, keep the keep possession of the files, and she lands on one of the planes. Looks in the window. Who does she discover? But her brother Michael. He claims he can explain, and that is where the issue ends. Okay, fun fun issue. Uh, I, I kind of dig the idea of you know just of Jess having to you know take on various low level thugs throughout the day. Just you know, one after, the, kind of like kind of going through like a supervillain relay. It seems. So yeah, fun issue. It'll be and uh, it, it's it's good to see her brother return uh, coming back in. Um, her brother, for those unaware, was a more recently added uh, recent addition to the Spider Woman mythos. Um, 
they're not on the best of terms, and to be perfectly honest, that's completely understandable because, you know, he did kind of, kind of did, you know, he did kind of sort of poison Jess. But yeah, anyway, bring us to our next book, Thor, number 15. Where we left off, um, Thor defeated Donald Blake after Donald Blake's uh, mental break and return. So, of course, you have the big celebration. Throg is there, Sif is there, Balder, Loki's there, Volstag. Yeah. Everyone's enjoying themselves, except for one person. Thor. Volstag starts telling the tale. He, he's exaggerating. It, it's Volstag. He's boastful, you know. Thor corrects it, or attempts to correct him, but... He leaves. Could barely pick up his hammer again. And it's still heavier than it should be. And he ends up hitting himself and knocking himself to the floor with his thought, with Molnir on his chest. When Loki comes in. And um, he really looks like he cannot lift the hammer, but Loki has no problem lifting it. And helps Thor up. But he's, he's got to figure out, what, he has to figure out what's going on with the hammer. And so he goes to Midgard, Earth. Where are the Avengers are dealing with cyborg monsters? Turns out that Thor wants to speak with Steve. Tells him a little bit what's, about what's going on. Hulk kind of says, hey, robot monsters? And he's like, oh yeah, about that. Massive lightning bolts blast, they're all dead. Uh, Tony alludes to their, their prank war, but yeah, uh, Thor's up with that. And apparently, perhaps Molnir has a mind of its own, as it forces an attack on Cap, which is blocked by the shield. Thor apologizes and explains that something is wrong with Molnir. That he's losing control. So him and Cap go to talk. And he talks about and Thor talks about the fact that his visits to Earth are, are you know, yeah, sure, maybe he's there for days, but they're like seconds to him. You know? And he's always, that's why he's always so happy when he comes when he returns to Earth to find the Avengers still still there because well he hasn't I mean he hasn't been gone that long but he he asked Steve you know when when was last when was the last time we saw one another and he said you know well we fought against Null and we faced the Phoenix Force. And he explains that immortality comes with a price. A moment for for uh, for Cap, a battle, a war, a minute, a day. I remember the seconds for, for Thor. The way, the way a mortal would recall what they had for breakfast a year ago. But uh, it's explained that... Um, He has spent so so long as basically the tip of the spear, the Asgardian spear, the hammer of Asgard, as it were. And now he is no longer the tip. He's no longer the hammer. He's no longer a warrior. He's no king, at least not yet. But, and while he will live a thousand years, a thousand years and a thousand lifetimes more, but, you know, Asgard shall outlive even him, and in that time he shall remain Asgard's king. But he is afraid he could no longer, that he could no longer be Asgard's hammer. And he leaves the room with Molnir sitting on the table. That is where the issue ends. 
that definitely going to make for some interesting uh, sort. Of, that's going to make for some interesting things. That's for sure. Um, Donny Cates' run has been on Thor has been great. Um, between his runs on Thor and Venom, I'm honestly really considering buying into his run on Hulk. But we'll see that. We'll see about that when it when it shows up. With Thor, it should be interesting to see where revelate what what all is re revealed. Uh, also, this is this may be the, be the first part of a story arc, but it it ha honestly felt like it worked so much in. It felt more like more than just the beginning, but I, I think that's also in part because it's, it's a short. It's not your usual length of a story. And there's nothing wrong with having a story arc where the first part is basically just putting all the pieces, ha arranging all the pieces where they're supposed to be at the beginning. There's nothing wrong with that at all. But anyway, moving on to our next book, we've got Extreme Carnage Scream. Where we left off in Extreme Carnage, the Carnage symbiote had bonded with a senator who was. Uh, was an anti-alien senator who was back in the Friends of Humanity. And it, he got in contact with uh, Flash Thompson, psychically. So we follow Scream. Um, she's infiltrating Alchemax, uh, and we, you know, talks a little bit about Alchemax, how you know, it's, it's home to various to uh, monstrosities. And mon many, many are made there. Mostly by men, but not everything there is man-made. For example, Doppelganger, who is Scream's target. She's looking, Scream's wanting to find Demogoblin. However, first, not only do you have to worry about dealing with uh, Doppelganger, but also with the Alchemax Guardsman. And she catches a uh, bit of a talk with Senator Crane on television. And something's talking to the symbiote. She tries to get away, but she ends up trapped in, in, well, in the hive, so to speak, by carnage. So now it's Carnage and Scream controlling things together. They kill the Guardsman while Andy's trying to fight it, fight her way out. And eventually she does, explaining that you know she's a, you know because she, she does have her Hellfire abilities, and she's the one who's been making a point of uh, you know making sure that Scream wouldn't be hurt by the Hellfire abilities. But well, yeah, is Scream to try and kill her? Well. Andy kills Scream. As more guardsmen arrive. That is where the issue ends. Um, I gotta say, I'm actually surprised that uh, I saw the end of Scream. Um, Visually, I, I, I have. Visually speaking, I, I like. I always like to look a scream. Um, it. I didn't read a lot of the stuff with the character, like previous incarnations of the character. Um, I, I never read Lethal Protector. At least I don't think I did. If I did, it's been a very long time. But yeah. Um, But yeah, no, they did say no uh, no symbiotes were safe. So to be fair, I kind of thought that no symbiotes were no symbiotes were safe would mean you know oh we'll probably kill off the carnage symbiote for the moment and you know maybe some of the less popular life foundation ones not the most recognized not the one that is probably the most recognizable and marketable. 
So yeah, moving on to our next book, we've got Spider-Man, Spider's Shadow number four. Where we left off, uh, Spider-Man had freed himself of the influence of the black costume, but it had escaped. And it had apparently taken over Reed Richards and Ben Grimm. Also, because Kingpin had let uh, the world know that Peter Parker and Spider-Man, before he died, well, in the aftermath of his death, the cops are there to pick up, uh, to arrest Spider-Man. So, Spidey, Black Cat, MJ, and J. And J. Jonah Jameson discuss what they're going to do. Um, Spider-Man basically tells, you know, says, you know, okay, we gotta lay low. That includes you, Jameson. You know, and but, and that's how we get MJ home. But on the way, he discovers that the Baxter building is covered in goop. And so, so he goes to investigate. The Avengers are assembled outside. Um, also outside are Johnny and Sue, so, and Franklin. They're safe. But Peter, you know, explains what's going, what happened to Captain America. Okay, Cap's got his back. And he's not going to let the symbiote uh, affect him again. But, yeah, it kind of it, it's still affecting him, just, you know, not in a controlling way. But he's given an earpiece, he has inside. MJ and uh, Johnny also join. MJ takes the gun from a guard. Um, and it's told to just, you know, wait in the lobby while, you know. But, uh, the thing attacks Human Torch. Then, uh, Spidey and the symbiote thing attack. Spidey's able to get, uh, Ben out of the building, but he's met by, and he's met, where he's met by the Avengers and X Factor. Elsewhere in the building, uh, Johnny runs into the symbiote possessed Mr. Fantastic. Turns out that he's made some modifications to the spawn of the symbiote so that they're immune to fire. The initial one, though, is still, you know, can still be affected by fire. And soon, however, is a an explosion of sorts as uh, the new symbiotes, uh, you know, go after new ho go after hosts, the Avengers, X Factor. And that is where the issue ends. Yeah, this is definitely. Definitely an interesting take on it, and, and like I, as I've been saying previously with this, I, I kind of like the fact that they're taking into account, basically revisiting that old what if, and taking into account the things that have been uh, set into stone about the uh, symbiotes since the old what if Spider-Man bonded with the alien costume issue. Moving on to our final book for the video, Champions, number eight. Where we left off, um, Miles had gotten a, a place within uh, an inter uh, rocks on internship. However, Nova had been passed over because he was just too boring. So Nova suggested that or Nova said he could get uh, an endorsement from Kamala Khan, Miss Marvel. Also, one of the uh, <laughs> A new a new hire at Roxxon is working on a rather uh, rather dangerous looking robot. So they discuss everything, going from that, looking at it from the perspective of a heist movie, basically. Uh, Viv actually Viv Vision is actually able to help everyone kind of get a you know see both sides of it, um, namely that. You know, Kamala didn't consent to be, you know, used in the, to participate in the, you know, in the field portion of, of this of this operation. But 
but and well, no, only did because he was hurt by rejection. Probably likely did he was hurt by rejection as an ability to, inability to act. That he wasn't part of the internship. However, Viv does acknowledge that. Uh, well, Sam does, Nova does have a point. They're going to take down Roxanne from the inside, and that does include Ka uh, Kamala. So, she goes for it. She meets Miriam Blakemore. They do note the fact that uh, Blakemore's taking a meeting with the general. And after a few days, Kamala can't do it. That said, it is stated that uh, the way Blakemore describes being an influencer, she makes it sound like like Doctor like being Doctor Doom. But uh, Kamala talks with uh, Sims, one of the other. One of the other new hire, little new hire working on the robot, and uh, he explains he he's works more working, being part of the public face isn't beneficial for him. That weekend, she and her parents discuss everything, and they you know she figures she can fix it from the inside, but her dad does tell her that you know don't go back on Monday simply because she wants to fix them. That's not from just that's not from one person to do. It takes far more than than that. So they plan everything out. Turns out that also that uh, Noah's been trying to get in touch with Speedball, uh, trying to you know just do what he can you know maybe get his intel to to stop everything. Uh, they've cloned Miriam Blakemore's ID card. Um, Nova has to keep Blakemore busy for a while. Miles has to keep Paige busy for a while, so that uh, the Vision can break into the vault, to the R and D vault, where she discovers the chaperone. And we also get a uh, video explaining it. It'll be an AI that is affected by um, teen usage of the Rocks On app. Um, they'll be able to guess in, in advance where teen superheroes might show up and be able to, to you know, rather than, oh, they're there, okay, time to, no, but no, it would be a case of, this is happening, well, you know, they'll be there for, the, uh, of course, AIs always work out, work exactly how their programs are working, especially in comics. Never do they ever decide, huh, maybe I could just do this. To, you know, but uh, Viv is trying to download all the files, but it's taking too long. And by, and before she's finished, Miriam arrives. While Vision, well, Viv stays out of sight. That is where the issue ends. Good stuff. Uh, I kind of I like the fact that the champions are doing this whole thing where they they're looking at at this from the perspective of various types of movies. Uh, initially, it was looked at as being like a heist movie, and then and now it's moving on to becoming like a spy movie. But uh, yeah, fun issue. It'll it'll be interesting to see where it, it's great to see what the it, it's nice to see what the final plan is, and it's you know it should be interesting to see how it plan how it all pans out. Anyway. That's it for now. As always, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Links to my Facebook, Twitter, Patreon, and PayPal can be found in the description box down below. This is Rock and Roll Spock signing off saying, live long and rock hard.